Intel's Arc B580 recently hit the $250 MSRP, and you can now fairly reliably purchase one at that price. So after almost a year, that's pretty exciting news, especially given alternatives like the GeForce RTX 5050 are complete garbage. The RTX 5060, it's a better option, but it also does cost more $300 US, and I think that makes the best value alternative to this thing right now. Probably the 9060 XT 8GB, which can be had for as low as $270 US, so that's a small 8% premium over the B580. The problem is, all of the Radeon and GeForce alternatives only come with 8GB of VRAM, and this is what made the Arc B580 so appealing, because it packs 12GB, and that is currently enough to stay out of trouble, even at 1440p. And you know what else can keep you and your hardware out of trouble? Today's video is brought to you by Arctic and their return to the case market with the Extender VG EATX mid-tower case featuring vertical GPU support. Designed to deliver maximum performance while still offering a visually impressive design, the Extender VG is perfect for high-end builds that you want to show off. The panoramic glass panels perfectly showcase your hardware, while the pre-installed high-performance P12 and P14 Pro ARGB fans make sure it all stays cool. Inside, you can fit a pair of 420mm radiators and graphics cards as long as 360mm in either a vertical or horizontal configuration. The Extender VG is available in white, black, and even a mirror black finish. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. So, 8GB GPUs have been a real problem for budget gamers in 2025, and for Arc, the problem has been poor availability, and as a result, high prices, but fortunately, that issue now looks to be largely solved. There is, however, also the little matter of the CPU overhead problem, which Intel publicly stated five months ago now that they were aware of, and were investigating optimizations. It's also been five months now since we last investigated the Arc overhead issue, so before we set about providing an updated set of benchmark results comparing the B580 with the likes of the RTX 5050, 5060, and other relevant GPUs, I thought it would be best to see where things are with the overhead issue, so that's what we're doing today. For this, I'll be comparing the performance of the B580 using the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, Ryzen 5 5600, and Ryzen 5 2600. I will be including the 8GB version of the Radeon RX 9060 XT, and I'll be using it as a measuring stick. And not necessarily to see how these two GPUs compare in terms of FPS performance, but rather I'll be using the 9060 XT as a guide for whether or not the results are CPU or GPU limited. So please keep that in mind as we go over the data. Okay, let's get into it. First up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and although the 9060 XT is 30% faster in this example, that's not what's important, or at least not for this testing. What is important is the fact that the Arc B580 delivered the same performance relative to the 9060 XT using both the 9800 X3D and 5600, proving that the overhead issue isn't a problem here, at least for a CPU equal to or greater than the Ryzen 5 5600. Where things get a little messy for the Arc GPU is when using a much slower CPU such as the Ryzen 5 2600. At first, this data might look favourable, as here it's just 18% slower than the 9060 XT, whereas it was 28% slower using the 5600. This is an issue, as the results using the 2600 should be entirely CPU limited, and therefore the B580 should be seen matching the performance of the 9060 XT. But due to the overhead problem, that isn't possible using this weaker CPU. Still, the 2600 is very old now, it's a very slow CPU, so the fact that we see no overhead problem when using the Ryzen 5 5600 is positive. Next up, we have Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, and here we're seeing some issues for the B580 when paired with the slower CPUs. The performance using the 9800X3D is impressive, just 14% slower than the 9060XT, though we do see a much larger 22% margin when comparing the 1% lows. Now, when paired with the Ryzen 5 5600, the 9600 XT looks to be CPU limited to 125 FPS, though without more hardware configurations, this is a bit of an assumption. Even so, we can still see the glaring issue with the B580. Here it drops to 99 FPS, and that's a 21% performance hit compared to what we saw when pairing it with the 9800 X3D. And this is an issue because we know the B580 can render 126 FPS on average when not CPU limited. So assuming no overhead issue, 
this level of performance should be possible with the Ryzen 5 5600 as proven by the 9060 XT. Then when we use the Ryzen 5 2600, both CPUs are heavily CPU limited, but not to the same frame rate. Typically you'd expect to see all GPUs under these conditions render the same amount of frames, so 80 FPS in this example. But we see another example where the B580 is almost 20% slower, and this is because it imposes roughly a 20% CPU overhead. Now testing with Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, we see no real issues for the B580, at least where I'm currently testing towards the start of the game. The B580 and 9060 XT delivered similar results using either the 9800X 3D or 5600, though the Radeon GPU was around 25% faster. We're also seeing similar margins when using the Ryzen 5 2600, so CPU performance isn't an issue for this testing. Next up we have Space Marine 2, and this title was problematic for the B580 in previous testing when looking at the CPU overhead issue. And sadly that's still the case today. The B580 is only good for around 60 FPS when using the medium settings, and we see this level of performance using either the 9800X 3D or 5600, suggesting that this is the limit for this GPU, at least with its current level of optimization. Unfortunately though, when we drop down to the Ryzen 5 2600, the B580 continues to fall away, and despite now being closer to the 9060 XT in terms of performance, it really should be capped at 52 FPS, as is the case with the Radeon GPU. But again, we're seeing a 21% hit here, and this is entirely down to the CPU overhead issue. Moving on to Borderlands 4, here we have another example where the B580 is able to deliver similar performance in a CPU demanding title using both the 9800X 3D and 5600, which is great news. However, Although it was able to average 89 FPS with the 9800X 3D and 87 FPS with the 5600, we found just 54 FPS when using the 2600, which is a real problem given that the same CPU allowed for 81 FPS with the 9060 XT. And that means we're looking at around a 33% overhead penalty in this example, which is obviously very problematic for those of you with older systems. Now, previous testing showed that the B580 overhead issue was extremely evident in Spider-Man Remastered, so I thought we'd give Spider-Man 2 a try. The results here don't look that great, just 64 FPS on average using the 9800X 3D, and then 60 FPS with the 5600, with a noticeable hit to the 1% lows. Then, when using the Ryzen 5 2600, the B580 was still almost 40% slower than the 9060 XT, rendering just 44 FPS on average, and realistically, without the CPU overhead issue, it should be rendering at least 60 FPS here. Performance in Marvel Rivals looked much better, at least in regards to the CPU overhead. The B580 produced similar results using either the 9800X 3D or 5600, and when paired with the 2600, there is some overhead evident, as it's still 9% slower than the 9060XT here, whereas it should be even, but this is much better than the 20-30% to margins we've seen in some of the other titles. The good news for B580 owners looking to play Dying Light the Beast, it doesn't appear as though the CPU overhead issue is an issue in this game. Here we saw very similar performance using all three CPUs. There was slightly more drop off for the B580 when using the 2600, but overall it was minor. Now the Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty results really shocked me, as previously when using the Ultra settings with the high crowd density option, the B580 really struggled using slower CPUs like the Ryzen 5 5600, and as a result, the performance with a 2600 would have been disastrous. So what's going on here? Well, before I explain, let's look at one more unexpected example. Now, five months ago, I revisited the ARC overhead issue after a large Russian YouTube channel called us out, essentially claiming the overhead issue wasn't really a thing. And quite humorously, after they doubled down on these claims, Intel came out the following day and publicly confirmed the overhead issue, reassuring ARC owners that they were actively looking into the problem, and this is what's relevant for the next part. But as a quick recap, here you can see how poorly the B580 was performing on the Ryzen 5 5600. Using the high preset with the 9800X 3D, the B580 was 13% faster than the RTX 4060, but when we switched processors to the 5600, the B580 wound up 27% slower, and that is a dramatic shift. So given those results, I was very puzzled to find that the B580 was now able to match the 9060XT when paired with the Ryzen 5 5600. 
Now be aware this data set uses the very high preset as I hadn't originally set out to compare this data with the results from about five months ago, but in any case, the B580 is clearly performing much better here, delivering higher performance when paired with the 5600 despite using higher in-game quality settings. Now we are still seeing a sharp decline when using the slower Ryzen 5 2600, around a 30% overhead hit can be seen here, so the problem still exists. But it does look as though Intel's been able to minimize the overhead that we were seeing previously, and this prompted me to do a little bit more digging to see where the changes occurred, and I found it. Okay, so here's how the B580 performs using a range of display drivers released from mid-2025. As you can see when paired with the 9800X3D, the seven driver versions tested all delivered the same or very similar results, so nothing really to see here. But if we switch to the Ryzen 5 5600 and check out the four driver versions released between July and August, and here Intel does release a lot of driver updates, which I guess is good to see, we do see just how slow the B580 was when paired with the 5600. Just 87 FPS on average, whereas it should be CPU limited to the same 117 FPS as the 9060 XT. So we're looking at a fairly typical 26% overhead hit here. But what shocked me was the data I received when using the latest display driver. The B580 is now good for 118 FPS on average, matching the 9060 XT. So for those with slower CPUs like the 5600, you're looking at a 36% performance boost thanks to nothing more than a display driver update. I narrowed this massive leap in performance down to driver version 7028, which was released just four days after 7026 in late August. So after making this discovery over the weekend, I emailed my Intel contact from the Arc team, and I asked him if any of the recent driver updates helped to address the CPU overhead issue, and he told me, yes, the Arc team had rolled out some game-specific optimizations, which will help with performance when using older generation processors, and these optimizations were first rolled out with driver version 7028. He also noted that the Arc team was targeting games that I'd previously highlighted to be problematic, hence Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered being fixed, and what looks to be optimizations for Cyberpunk 2077. This is massive news though, as it's the first evidence we've seen that Intel can, at least in some capacity, address the overhead issue, minimizing it to the point where it's really a non-issue using even three-year-old entry-level CPUs like the Ryzen 5 5600. When we first highlighted this problem nine months ago now, Intel did acknowledge to us in a private email that what we were seeing was accurate, and that is to say, in select titles, the Arc GPUs would suffer massive performance issues when paired with slower CPUs. Basically, Intel told us they were aware of the issue and they were actively looking into it, and if they came up with a fix, they'd let us know. However, the months quickly started to roll by with no word from Intel, and like I said five months ago, I did revisit the ARC overhead issue and found nothing had really changed. Then just last week, Tim and myself were talking on the Harbour and Box podcast about how the ARC B580 and the B570 GPUs had finally hit their MSRPs and were mostly in stock. And I mentioned that I would need to revisit the B580 to see how it fits in the current landscape, compares with parts like the 9060 XT 8GB and RTX 5060. And I also noted that an updated look into the overhead issue in recently released games would also be well worth doing. Well, curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to start testing in some of my free time over the weekend. And that's when I discovered the recent driver optimizations, which as far as I'm aware, no one outside of Intel is actually aware of. And it's really big news. For nine months now, we've been working under the assumption that this is something that Intel simply can't fix or perhaps even improve, as most believed it to be a fundamental hardware design issue. And while that is still very likely to be true, it is now evident that at least to some degree, Intel can mitigate the effects of the overhead issue. Now, this overhead problem is by no means completely solved for Arc, but in games like Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered that received some game-specific optimizations, the CPU overhead problem is now far less of a problem. And I think for most gamers, it'll likely be a non-issue, pretty much problem solved, I would say. It's really impressive how active the Arc driver team has been this year, and I think probably since the introduction of Arc, really. And although it has taken the better part of a year for this specific fix to surface, 
they have released countless driver updates in that time, addressing a wide range of issues and also expanding support. And that alone has made me much more confident about ARC than I've really ever been, and therefore more comfortable recommending parts like the B580. Speaking of which, here is how the B580 compared to the 9060 XT 8GB across the 10 games just tested. Using the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, the Radeon GPU was an average 34% faster, pretty massive margin there, and then 30% faster with the much slower Ryzen 5 5600. Then, for those of you using much older CPUs, you'll still receive a much better experience with the 9060 XT, or RTX 5060 for example, as here we see a 27% performance increase for the 9060 XT when paired with the 2600, and this is entirely down to the CPU overhead issue. As it stands, the 9060 XT 8GB cards, they cost almost 10% more, not quite, I think it's about 8% when comparing the $270 US price points, but they do deliver around 30% greater performance, at least in the sample of games we've seen here, though I think that's pretty typical when looking at a, a reasonable range of games. Now, the only downside to the Radeon GPU being that it has just 8GB of VRAM, and while 12 gigabytes is certainly much better, uh, VRAM, while extremely important, it isn't everything. Now, if the 9060 XT and B580 were much closer in terms of performance, say the Radeon GPU was just 10% faster, then I think the VRAM angle becomes a much greater consideration. That said though, had I tested at 1440p with upscaling, the margin might have come down a bit. But even so, I expect that the 9060 XT 8GB would have still been at least 20% faster on average, which is kind of like a different performance tier. It's a performance tier above. This is what will help keep the 8GB 9060 XT below MSRP, because at $300 US, it costs 20% more than the B580, and at that point, I'd be swayed towards the ARC GPU. As it stands, it's difficult to say which one you should buy. A $250 B580 or a $270 9060XT 8GB, and of course I'm really interested to hear what you guys think on this, which one of these products makes the most sense to you. I do plan on comparing these GPUs and more at more resolutions in more games shortly, so make sure you are subscribed for that, and if you'd like to become a Hardware Box member, we do have the join button there, or Patreon, you can sign up with using either one of those, and you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And of course, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.